Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is which of the following sequences of the DNA could code for the stem loop structure only the template strand is shown and as you see here we have three uh, DNA sequences and as you know DNA doesn't make uh, three-dimensional structures like uh, stem loop structures only message RNA made such uh, structures or uh, for example, non-coding RNA. So let me first explain what is the template strand of the DNA is. So we have two strands of the DNA. One would be a template strand and another one we call um, coding strand of the DNA. And here is a message RNA shown. So this is going to be 5 prime end and this is going to be 3 prime end. And message RNA grows from 5 prime end to 3 prime end. So this is going to be direction in which uh, message RNA would be elongated and it is elongated continuously. As you see I am using the same color for this strand of the DNA, the same as for the message RNA and I do this intentionally because uh, the coding sequence on this strand of the message RNA and on this strand of the DNA would be the same because this is going to be our template strand of the DNA and message RNA strand would be complementary to this strand. For example, if we have here A, A, A on the message RNA we are going to have U, U, U because adenine base pairs with uh, uracil in message RNA and in the uh, coding strand of the DNA we are going to have zymine, zymine and zymine. And for example if we would have here cytosine this would base pair with guanine and we also would have uh, guanine here. Or if we would have uh, for example uh, cytosine here we would have guanine here and guanine here. So as you see coding strand of the DNA uh, would have the same code, the same sequence as uh, message RNA with exception that uh, zymine in message RNA would be replaced with uracil and also coding strand of the DNA has the same prime ends. So here we would have 5 prime end, 3 prime end here and we also can tell that uh, uh, on the template strand of the DNA we would have 5 prime end here and 3 prime end here because uh, strands of the DNA goes in the reverse uh, directions. And now let me explain what is a stem loop structure. Stem loop structure we can see uh, on the example of the tRNA. As you remember tRNA looks uh, like this. So it has uh, what we call three leaves and three stems. So this part we call stem and this part we call loops. And uh, of course here uh, bases would pair. For example if we would have G here, here we would have C. So guanine base pairs with cytosine and uh, if we would have for example a, A here. On the other strand of the RNA we are going to have uh, uracil and uracil because in message RNA adenine would base pair with uracil. So and uh, here where we have loops we are going to have bases that doesn't pair. So doesn't make uh, base pairs. For example uracil and cytosine and cytosine. Or for example uh, guanine, guanine, guanine. So guanine wouldn't make base pairs with itself. So uh, why it is important in genetic engineering for example when you uh, engineer message RNA that uh, would be uh, later translated into the protein if you would have a structure at the beginning stem loop structure at the place where uh, ribosome should attach 
this stem loop structure uh, would prevent such attachment and uh, expression level of such uh, message RNA would be uh, greatly reduced or uh, ribosome wouldn't be able to make a protein from such uh, message RNA completely. So as you see this is very important to predict such structures. So let's now analyze what we have here. Actually we don't have to draw uh, message RNA from this template strand because uh, if we have uh, four uh, zymines here that means uh, that uh, in message RNA we are going to have four adenines here and neither four zymines would base pair neither four adenines in message RNA also would base pair. So we actually don't have to uh, transcribe this uh, strand of the DNA into the message RNA so we just can use uh, these sequences and see if the sequences would make uh, stem loop structure or not. For example let's start from the answer C and I see here that we have four zymines here so four zymines wouldn't make uh, base pairing like we have here and uh, these four bases would make uh, a loop. So let's uh, analyze this sequence and let's start from here in the middle. So we have thymine, thymine, thymine and thymine and they wouldn't make a pairing. So let's analyze this part. Here we have guanine and guanine and here we also have guanine and guanine and guanine doesn't make bases with itself. Cytosine and cytosine here and uh, zymine and zymine here. And we know that cytosine base pairs with guanine but we have uh, zymine and zymine here. We have a slight probability that these two guanines would base pairs with these two cytosines but let's analyze the whole sequence. So uh, next we have um, cytosine and uh, zymine zymine. So cytosine and zymine zymine here. And here we have three cytosines. Once again we don't have base pairing here. And two left bases is guanine and guanine here. And guanine and guanine here. So except that uh, we have slight possibility that these two cytosines would make base pairs with uh, guanines, uh, we shouldn't have a stem loop structure here because we are not going to have stem and uh, stem made by two uh, cytosines wouldn't be strong enough to hold uh, this large uh, loop. As you see we have here a template strand but if you wish you can build complementary message RNA. So here we would have adenine, 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 adenine here, cytosine, cytosine, guanine, 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 um, adenine, adenine, cytosine and cytosine here and cytosine, cytosine, adenine, adenine and guanine guanine, guanine, cytosine and cytosine here. And as you see uh, still this message RNA wouldn't base pair with itself. So we don't actually need to uh, transcribe each sequence into the message RNA in order to see if it is going to make stem loop structure. So let's now analyze answer B. Once again we are doing the same thing. So here we have uh, four adenines. So adenine, adenine, adenine and adenine. Here we have guanine and guanine and guanine guanine here. So these bases wouldn't make base pairs. Uh, zymine, zymine here and here. So zymine, zymine. Zymine and zymine. And 
cytosine, 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 cytosine here, and cytosine, cytosine here, and we have cytosine, guanine, guanine, cytosine, guanine, guanine, and here we also have cytosine, guanine, guanine, cytosine, guanine, guanine. And once again, if we build a complementary message RNA, it's not going to make stem loop structure. So let's check answer A. Let's again start from this part that we know for sure wouldn't make base pairing. So this is going to be part of the loop. So we have uh, adenine, 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 and adenine here. So this part of the strand and here we have cytosine and cytosine and guanine and guanine here and we know that cytosine and uh, guanine base pairs so here we would have uh, base pairing and here is going to be our loop and this is going to be our stem so loop and stem so let's analyze what we have here so here we have uh, adenine and adenine and thymine and thymine so adenine adenine and thymine thymine once again adenine and thymine base pairs and here we have guanine guanine and cytosine cytosine here so guanine guanine and cytosine cytosine and once again this base is pairs I don't have much uh, space left, so let's just analyze uh, visually what we have left. We have guanine here, and guanine base pairs with cytosine, and we have two cytosines here that base pairs with two guanines here. So our answer, as you see, would be answer A, this um, strand of the DNA that is going to be template strand of the DNA and would be used in order to make message RNA that would uh, repeat DNA structure that we got here. And of course, between bases, we are going to have uh, phosphodiester bonds. And between bases within uh, stem, we are going to have um, hydrogen bonds. And hydrogen bonds are weak. But still, this can be an obstacle for ribosome bounding to the message RNA. And uh, genetic engineers have to take this into account when they engineer message RNAs and proteins. And this is basically all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.